HARPA should stand up on its own. One thing that the Department of Defense learned back in 1957, it was a brand new model. It was revolutionary. So if you want something to do something revolutionary, you have to create a revolutionary apparatus for it. It can't be built within the same old structure. The flag for this race to begin of filling HARPA comes when the, when the president hopefully signs an executive order. The president of the United States directs his agency to come up with a, a plan for a HARPA would look like. How would it function? What would its size be? What would its focus be? And then issue a report, if you will, or a blueprint to Congress that explains, here's what we could do to drive innovation in biomedical research and address some of the market failures that exist today. I think there is a deep wellspring of feeling in the country among people generally that they want Congress to get off of the dysfunction they've been involved in and get some things that are important done. You've got some extraordinary people in Congress um, and the administration. If you have somebody who's dedicated enough, they'll find ways of getting what you want done. And within six months, we should be up and running. The return on investment for the United States government will be huge. There's no question about that. We, know, we absolutely know that, that taxpayers will save money by investing in this new agency. Yes, there are a lot of headlines. Yes, the federal government is funding billions of dollars to states to help with this issue. But are we really creating lasting change? Only the federal government can build the infrastructure to provide the capability of our healthcare system to implement research within a matter of months, not decades. When I talk to people about this and they just say, my God, it's so, so obvious. Why doesn't that happen?